Hey campers, check it out, roof racks. It's quite a contentious subject. There are so many makes and models out there. There's some really clever stuff as well, really well-made stuff. Can get quite pricey, but then at least you know the quality is there. This is our roof rack. I've modified it a little bit. I'm gonna take you around it, tell you what the good parts are and the bad parts. Let's check it out. So I think you're all quite familiar with a brand that has blue packaging and you might be shaking your head thinking, what have you done? There's one reason mainly for having this roof rack as it is on our truck, and that is time, dosh, ping ping, all that kind of stuff. We don't have much of it. So we can't afford a really expensive uh, roof rack. This is what I've come up with, a flat pack. Can you believe that? This thing came in a box about that, by that and about two meters long. All the pieces were disassembled and it came through the post. Can you believe it? So basically what we did, or what I had to do, is uh, assemble it all with the bolts, all these corner pieces. Basically, this piece here is connected to this bracket here and there's a bolt that goes through the side rails. So it assembles pretty well, everything fits, all the bolts are there, everything you need for it, and it actually fits as well. It fits exactly in the gutters. There's no fiddling around or kind of modifying it in that way. So just put it together, put it on the roof, clamp it down with these, and you're away. Oh, can't be easier than that, really. What I can say about this roof rack is you all know this one pretty well. It's the bog standard bottom of the line one, which actually has quite a high um, profile so the sides are pretty high actually originally the sides are about that high and the top rail runs all the way to the back in one line you can choose you can specify if you want the bottom carrying part of it to go straight along all the way to the front which means it's about here or you can have it lowering following the roof line and from here it lowers forward and that's the one I chose but the main reason I modified it is our roof tent our roof tent's 140 wide so is the roof rack so that wasn't going to work you can't mount it on there on the side rails so what I did I would cut these down as much as I could which is about the height which is the height of this bracket here with a bolt holding the cross members on and what I did then was mounted the roof tent on some some boards, some planks about six centimeters high. So we've got a little bit of room between the roof rack and the and the bottom of the tent. So that worked out pretty well. What I did then is I followed the profile of the front bottom rail, which actually dips along with the line of the roof. I did that with the top as well. And actually, if I look at it. I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously what you do then is you paint it black because uh, yeah it's galvanized. Galvanized yeah I know some people like that kind of style I prefer just black and white. It matches the mud guards, the tread plate. I painted this black as well remember I told you that in the previous video. So to have then a galvanized roof rack wasn't going to work for me so I gave it some hammerite. I think it's hammer right, it's coming off. <laughs> uh, let's have a look at the top as well. So here we are on the top of the roof. I put some boards here. These are planks, I think it's fencing or decking or something. It is an oak. It's an outside uh, wood. It's a weatherproof wood. Uh, I've painted that black as well, but that's slowly coming off. It's weathering, actually looks quite cool. It's probably the strongest part of the roof rack, if I'm honest. I don't know if that adds to the rigidity, but I put it here so we can sit on it. You can have a seat, have a sundowner here. Gives us access to the front of the tent as well. Not just from the back, but we can walk on here. We can put our uh, crates on here. We can put uh, jerry cans, whatever you need. This little bit of uh, wood planking gives us a little more support, a bit more to walk on. Because frankly, the gap between these two here and the two here is like, I think it's 40 by 50. That's quite a big hole. You don't want to go stand on your roof by mistake. So I'll put all this on here and it's uh, actually worked out pretty well. 
but also gives us the second part of our experience with our roof rack. We've had it now for I think three years and if I knew we'd be using it this much I might have invested in a more expensive roof rack. I'll be honest because let me show you. So yeah you want to step onto your roof rack what do you do or do you want to sit on it? I don't know if you can see that it's flexing. If I stand on it See that? That's pretty much uh, quite a lot of flexing, I have to say. So I'm not really that uh, confident in it. But having said that, we've used this for the last three years now. And both of us sitting on it. And it's held up pretty well. The one thing I will show you is the back. This is where the most of the weight is on uh, because that's where the midpoint of the tent is and all the weight is resting right on here. What I did then is use the bar that used to be up here from the cross member of the roof rack. I cut that bar off and I joined it with the bottom bar here to give it a bit more, uh, bit more rigidity, a bit more strength. Even so, you can see that's just a light pressure. So I think there's a lot of weight on here. It does bend a lot. This part here, this weld, broke off. I put a little bracket up here. That was a temporary measure three years ago. It's still there. It still works. So yeah, that's quite a bit of a, a downer. There's a lot of flexing in it, but uh, also the cross member at the back, even though these are wood, which gives me a bit more uh, support laterally, it has sagged at the back. So the whole tent is a little bit lower here then up here, that's about a centimeter or a centimeter and a half because it has sagged through all the use and the weight of it. But yeah, what do you expect? We expected that from the start anyway. What I did manage to do here with tie wraps, this is our awning. It just slips in there. This is a bit of damage. There was a lot of wind on our trip in Corsica and the wind just took the whole flap of the a whole flap of the awning and just threw it up and this whole thing just bent here but I managed to get it back to work this is where our rubbish bag goes always it actually doesn't really dent bend these gutters where the uh, feet are the brackets that's not too bad you can see I've just used pop rivets that one actually broke there's no welding involved here because uh, I'm not one of those guys who knows how to weld, but I did get around it. But as you can see, there's a lot of gaps between the steel. There's a cross member and there's one and there's nothing here. That's why I put the wood over there. But if you look here, you can see there's just a huge open hole. So this is about as basic as a roof rack can get. It's not very heavy. I think it's about 40, 45 kilos. Two people can easily pick it up. So there you have it, this is my roof rack. I've modified it a little bit, mainly to fit the tent, but also to make it look a little bit cooler because it had that big square front edge along the front, which wasn't very cool. It's held up, it's very cheap. I think it's 150 or 200 euros. For the money, you get a lot of metal. A couple of things wrong with it. It flexes a lot and it's not that strong. But besides that, we've both been on there sleeping, we both sat on the front jumped around, used it to haul stuff, and it's just performed this job. So I hope you've been informed a little bit. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let us know what your experiences are like. Give us a comment down below. We'll catch you on the next one. Keep rolling. <laughs>